Okay guys, welcome to this educational video. Now the purpose of today's video is an introduction to Forex trading. So this video is going to be structured in such a way that it's going to be a lecture or PowerPoint presentation structure to it. Um, it's intended for beginners or those with minimal Forex trading experience. So I've tried to simplify uh, as much as possible into a shorter lecture as possible. So there might be, for those of you who have experienced trading Forex before, there might be certain bits of information that you could argue is rather important I've left out. Well, that's not the point of this video. It says there it's an introduction to Forex trading. Um, if there's any questions or any information you feel like I haven't touched on or you want more information on, I'll leave my uh, details of all my social media accounts, whatever, at the end of this video. You can get in touch with me on whatever platform and I will answer your questions uh, personally. So just to get started, disclaimer here, uh, just read through this. It says basically I'm not a financial advisor. Any of the content on any of my uh, social media platforms or my website don't constitute financial advice. Um, trade at your own risk. Do not invest uh, money that you can't afford to lose. Each individual is different, so your appetite for risk is going to be different. So, yeah, just read through this. Um, pause it if you like. Going to carry on here. So, like I said, the purpose of today's video is intended for beginners or uh, people with minimal trading experience. Um, the lecture is going to cover the basics of Forex trading and technical analysis. Uh, so, we're going to start off with candlesticks. What are candlesticks? You know, they make up. Um, the basis of the charts, which then obviously we perform the technical analysis on the charts. It's kind of important to know that. And then support, resistance, trends, and ultimately how to create a basic trading plan. Obviously, that's going to be up to the individual, but we'll run through some examples of uh, certain rules based system that you could use to create a trading plan and you can adapt that to how you want it. Um, also, it says at the end there, you know, to eliminate the perception that the market's an evil, daunting entity limited to professionals with millions of pounds, dollars, euros, whatever currency you trade in. Um, so, obviously, as retail traders, we are um, at a disadvantage already due to the lack of funds or, you know, uh, impact we could have on the market. But it's not the big, scary place that everyone makes it out to be. Um, and hopefully this will reiterate that. Uh, it says there, obviously, pause, rewind, watch, um, and ask questions uh, at the end. Um, that's the whole purpose of this video. You can watch it at your own pace. If I'm going too slow, this will be uploaded to YouTube. And uh, bottom right of the video, you can uh, speed up the video one and a half, two times if you want to. Um, pause it, rewind it. You can slow the video down if you want, if I'm going too fast. Um, yeah, so you can watch this at your own pace and take notes. It's important to take notes on this. So just some basic information on the Forex market. Uh, it's a 24-hour market, five days a week, Monday to Friday. Uh, you don't need to sit around and watch the charts around the clock. You can use orders to manage your trading. We'll get into that later. Um, your trade using leverage for a small amount of money can be used to control a much larger position size. This is covered in the next slide. It's not one of the key points I wanted to focus on in this lecture. Um, so what makes the forex market the same as any other market on earth, supply and demand. So like any other asset, when demand for a certain currency increases, the price goes up. Now what does determine supply and demand? It's basically what people are willing to pay for it. So unlike uh, equities, markets, or whatever, there's no underlying account system for any particular currency. So there's no balance sheet, there's no uh, P&L. Um, so so many factors involved that it's actually the value of the currency is what the market perceives a particular currency to be worth. So the market determines the price. So for example, you might have on the, on the equities market, you might have a stock that releases their quarterly results. Quarterly results are good, so the price goes up because they think that the company is doing well, therefore it should be valued at a higher price. Simply put as that. Um, Forex market is basically determined by market participants, so markets made up 
buyers and sellers. This is constitutes the forex market. It's just a place of buyers and sellers, buyers and sellers of certain currencies. Uh, it's these buyers and sellers which make the price move. So if someone perceives the value of the pound in this instance, we take the pound as an example. If someone perceives the value of the pound is going to rise, they will buy pounds. Simple, simply put, okay? So the more buyers in the market, the more demand there is for the pound. Therefore, the more demand, the higher the price. So more people want to buy the pound because they feel like the price is going to go up. So they buy it at a low price, price goes up, they'll then sell it at a higher price. Simple as that. So the forex market has an average daily trading volume of over $5 trillion every day, that is. Hence why it's such a relatively stable market. I've underlined relatively there um, because it all is relative um, depending on uh, how you cut the price down, if that makes sense. So decimal points you take. Um, yeah, that's not important. Uh, it's almost impossible for an individual group or uh, person to manipulate the price due to the vast amount of money required to do so. Unlike, so their crypto or equities. So um, although, let's take, for example, equities market, I know Elon Musk recently has been tweeting causing havoc with the stock uh, with the share price of Tesla. That's it can happen in the forex market. So, for example, the other day we had a Bank of England speech. At the time of this video, we're going through um, some Brexit negotiations, and we had the Bank of England um, speech, and that caused the price to fluctuate quite heavily on the pound. Um, but it's nothing like uh, equities or crypto fluctuations. So crypto, for example, you might see fluctuations of 10, 20% a day. You're not going to see anything like that in the Forex market. Um, now this slide here, I'm gonna, I've only included it just for your information. Only if you want to take notes on it, just pause the video and take some notes. It's not a key slide within this lecture, and it's really it does get really confusing if you're not um, maybe have an economic or maths background. Um, it basically breaks down uh, what you need to know to enter a trade. But most brokers, or if you trade through a certain trading platform and link your broker to that platform, all of these calculations are going to be done for you. So it's as sim they make it as simple as possible. So you're not going to be able to, you're not going to need to know these uh, calculations or anything like that. So I've thrown it in there just for informational uh, purposes only. Take some notes, pause the video if you want to take notes on that. If not, if it looks really daunting and confusing, don't worry about it. Just skip this slide. Um, so let's head straight into the technical analysis now then. So some trading platforms, these are two I used. Uh, it says here, simple, simple, easy, and free. Trading view, um, I would class this not so much as a Facebook, maybe the Instagram of uh, trading. So it's free to use, easy to sign up. And it says there, social media platform. So you post your trading ideas on this platform. And once the idea has been posted, you can't delete that idea. So no one can upload a load of different ideas and delete all the ones that were wrong so it makes them look really good at trading you can do that once your idea has been uploaded it's there for for life you can't delete that um i'm on there if you want to follow me again. my details are going to be at the bottom of uh, the end of this lecture so follow me on that um it's also uh, used for education um so people can post mini lectures and videos or whatever on there as well um, and scripts as well, which are things you can add to the charts, whatever people can create them and you can download them yourself and add them to your own charts. Um, so it says there again, trading view, you can, it allows you to immerse yourself into a trading environment. So you can follow people on there. You can get followers on there, chat to people, chat to me on there, uh, like other people's ideas, comment on their ideas, ask some questions, what have you. Uh, it's got all the main tools and indicators that you will ever need on there. Some people can go absolutely nuts. You can pay for uh, Pro or Pro Plus membership, I believe it's called. 
Um, you can add more indicators and tools to your charts, whatever you might need. Um, I personally, I'm not because I don't use multiple tools or indicators. Everything that is on their free version, I that's all I need. Um, so I've not signed up to their pro version. So if it's free, it's for me. Uh, paper trading as well. So you can basically set up a demo account and you can trade without real money. Um, I would recommend you doing this just to get a feel for trading. It's not going to... Um, it's hard to explain. It's not going to be as effective as trading with real money. Now, that's not saying go straight in as soon as you finish this video, go straight in and start trading with real money. That's not what I'm saying at all. But once you start trading with real money, your psychology will change significantly to what you were trading on the paper trading account with fake money. Um, it's real money. There's real money at risk. Um, yeah, so just bear that in mind. Um, and you've also got the ability to link to certain brokers as well. So you can link your brokerage account to trading view with the, the certain uh, brokers who they are linked with. I know FX, CM and Oanda are paired with TradingView. So you can link your brokerage account with them and actually trade through the TradingView charts, which can be quite handy. Um, I've also put in there MetaTrader. Now I actually link my broker to MetaTrader. Um, now it does look really old, really dated software, but it's reliable and it has again everything you could ever need. Um, the same as TradingView, TradingView is a bit more up to date, but MetaTrader is a bit more reliable, it has everything you ever need on there. Uh, it's particularly useful for algorithmic traders, so if you have a um, particular algorithm or it's, uh, scripts or whatever indicators you want to create yourself, you can code them and add them to your charts willy-nilly you don't there's no limit to the amount of algorithms you can add to the chart um, their charts can be as simple as complex as you like all the main tools and indicators you can set up a demo account as well same as paper trading demo account they're the same thing you can set up a demo account on here as well so you can either do one or the other trading view meta trade or both and uh, the majority of brokers allow you to trade through this platform whereas trading view is limited to only a few brokers um and yeah negative it it does look a bit dated and it can be quite uh, overwhelming for beginners to try and set it up um but i personally i trade through that if you can get over that initial um overwhelming feeling when you first download it and trying to get used to the platform it does become a helpful tool uh, so to get started then, let's run through the candlesticks. Um, so obviously the candlesticks make up the core foundation of the charts. The charts are created of candlesticks and then you now you then add uh, information to the charts to help basically get an edge over the market. Um, so to begin with, we've obviously got here candlesticks represent price action throughout a given period of time. It allows you to identify the open price, the closed price, the highest price, and the lowest price which that currency traded within the select period. The greater the period, the less noise, the lower the period, the more data. So to summarize that then, I'll get the laser point right here. It says there, identifies the open price, closed price, highest price, lowest price within a selected time period. So let's take this candle here, bullish candlestick. Bullish means uh, price moving higher. Bearish means price moving lower. Or bearish, bearish people can be called sellers. Bullish, bullish people, bulls can be uh, buyers. So it says here, got the open of the candlestick. Oh, sorry, let's just start from here. So the selected time period. So it's open close high and low on within a selected time period so let's just take this candlestick here the bullish candlestick this candlestick here is going to represent one hour of trading now we've got open here open price so if you had price say one dollar whatever let's just use the example of a dollar one dollar up here 90 cents down here the open would be about 92 and a half cents about a quarter of the way up so it opens at 92 and a half cents. 
and closes at say 95 cents. So within that hour, price has opened here, moved higher and closed at 95 cents from 92 and a half cents. Now also within that hour, you can see here, you've got the low, lower shadow of the candle, candle body, candle wick. So you've got the low, so within that hour, price opened here, price might have initially moved lower, say 15 minutes in, it's down here. It's then moved higher, maybe half an hour it's in, it's up here. It's then moved higher again to the high, or the upper shadow, or candle wick. So it's moved to the high, maybe about 45 minutes in, and then it's slowly moved back down within the next 15 minutes to close on that close of that hour, it's closed at this price here. So it opened and closed at these prices. The rest is just noise where price has been within that hour. And the reverse here. So a price opened here, might have moved higher to begin with, then a lot lower just to pull back up and close uh, lower than it opened, but higher than the uh, lowest price within that hour. So I hope that makes sense. If I do try drawing it this way, so you have, sorry for the poor drawing. Again guys, if you, that made perfect sense to you, you can skip this part, but for those of you who are a bit confused, you've got the candlestick here. Now let's, let's just because it's black here, it's going to call this a bearish candle. So like we had before, bearish candle opens at the top, closes at the bottom. So bearish price is moving lower. Okay. So we've got the open of the candle. Let's call it a one hour candle. So within one hour, we've got start at zero. We'll go up to 60 minutes. So price has opened at this level. So starting at zero, we've opened price here. Now let's just say price, as the hour has gone on, price has moved up. Yeah, so say we're about 10, 15 minutes in, price has moved up to this high here. The hour continues, price might fluctuate a bit, fluctuate a bit, and then all of a sudden we get a drop down to this low here. Uh, about 30 minutes in, maybe 40 minutes in, price then moves higher into the mid range of the candle. Price then moves a little bit lower, and at 60 minutes, this candle will close at this price here. Move that down. So at 60 minutes, this candle's closed. So within that 60 minute time period, we've had price. Uh, price higher, lower. We have price initially open here. Price has moved higher. So it just moved down to the low here. So move back up and eventually close at the 60 minute mark. It's closed here. So this whole candle here represents one hour of price movement. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And we've got down here. Uh, it's not important to remember these names. Uh, I see people getting arguments all over social media about what candles named what and people making up their own names and it just gets a bit out of hand. Um, but if we take the example of the doji, so let's take this example. So based on the doji, looks like this. So price has opened at this level. Notice there's no actual candle body. Price has opened at this level. Price has moved higher. Within an hour, yeah. So it's an hourly candle. Price has moved higher. Price has moved lower. Price has moved back up to where it originally opened within the first uh, minute of the hour. And it's closed at exactly the same price as it, as it opened. So within the hour, price has moved up, price has moved down, but ultimately it's closed at exactly the same price it opened. Now we can take a few things away from that. So based on that, the, there's no bias in the market. So the buyers have tried increasing the price, 
and sellers have tried decreasing the price, but no, neither party's won, basically. So buyers have come in, tried pushing the price higher. Sellers have come in and tried pushing the price lower. But ultimately, they've closed exactly the same place as the price opened. So equal buyers to sellers, you can take away from that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So on to the next slide. Basically, the only thing to take away from that is the uh, each candle represents um, the open price, the closed price, the highest price, and lowest price within a selected time period. Now then. Here we obviously have, uh, so just to start off with, up here you see it says 1D, that means we're on the daily chart. So each candle represent one, represents one day of trading. So one day of price action within the market. So this candle here represents 24 hours of trading. The next candle here represents the next 24 hours. Candle here next 24 hours all three candles represent three days of uh, price action within the market three trading days now I've circled this area here and we obviously each candle represents 24 hours so within this candle if we were to move to the hourly time frame within this candle here this black candle here, the bearish candle, we should see 24 hourly candles within this candle. Okay, so if we move on to the next slide, delete this quickly. So I've circled that area here. This area circled is now on the hourly time frame. Okay, the top there, 60 minutes, hourly time frame. So that area I circled on the previous slide is now represented on the hourly. So if you take note here, prices moved lower, prices moved higher, prices there moved all the way down here, price moved higher, a little bit of a pullback, and price moves higher. So that's on the hourly. If we go back here, let me delete this, sorry. This is on the hourly, okay. Yeah, that is represented here. Price has moved lower. Price has moved back up to here. Price has then moved all the way down. Price has moved up, a little bit of a pullback. And then price moves higher. So down, up all the way down here bit of a pullback and then price moves higher and then that's here which is down up all the way down up a little bit of a pullback price moves higher okay i hope that made sense so each candle on this chart now represents an hour's worth of trading now different chart same uh, hourly uh, daily time frame up here so so dear now the magic starts to happen so this is a very very basic um, just I've really only thrown this in uh, I wouldn't recommend trading off of this but I have really only thrown this in because uh, it shows you the how strong a factor that human psychology plays in the market now it goes back to that first slide we said the market's made up of buyers and sellers. So it's basically deter prices determined by whatever the people who are trading the market think that that certain currency uh, is valued at. So obviously determined by a bunch of humans and human psychology clearly then plays a part in the market. So what I've drawn on here are quarter points. Now as humans we like nice round numbers. So drawn on quarter points here. So 135, 1375, 1325, 130, 1275, 
and 125. Now you can see nice round numbers, nice round quarter points, especially this um, 130 area here. And you can see price reacts. So this 130 is represented by this red line. And you can see when price gets into that 130 zone, we react off of it. So price moves up higher, gets into that 130 zone and price reacts off of that. Especially here, price moves lower, price moves up into the 130 zone and reacts off of that 130 zone. Breaks through the 130, pulls back into it and reacts off of that 130 moves higher. Again here, and here, and here, and here, and maybe in this area here, and here as well. And maybe as we speak now, uh, price reacting off that 130 level. And that's just before doing any analysis whatsoever, purely based on the prices. Um, all we've done is uh, put draw some lines on at the even uh, numbers and that's just to show how much uh, human psychology plays a part in the market so just because they're even numbers price is reacting off of those levels it might have nothing to do with the value of the underlying currency nothing to do with the value of the underlying currency purely human psychology is playing a part in that price action there um, but that's six there guys um realistically wouldn't be using these uh, to trade off of so if we move on to the next slide now uh, got here previous areas of price uh, support and resistance levels so the support levels act as a floor so price moves lower you have an area of support price acts as a floor so price can't penetrate through that floor acts as a support level and price bounces off of it. We've also got resistance levels, which acts as a ceiling. So price gets to that area, it's resisting the price moving higher, acts as a ceiling and bounces off of that. And then back into our support, bounces off of that, back into the resistance, bounces off of that. So main thing to take away there, support is the bottom, resistance at the top. So I've drawn on here some lines and exclamation marks um, where price has reacted from the same levels multiple times. So for the blue ones, it's acted as resistance here. This price couldn't get past this level, couldn't get higher. Acted as resistance again here. Acted as resistance. Price has moved up into this level and bounced off. Um, acted as resistance again here and here and here go down to this orange one now so we've obviously acted as support now oh sorry these three are support levels as well so coming down into it support 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 so this orange one here acted as support bounced off of it nice reaction off of that level now come back in to test this level again act as support bounced off of it back down can't break through it again bounced off of it back down can't break through it again bounced off of it tiny pull back and then finally when we do break through it we see a big move big move down in this candle wick here so a strong break through that okay again up here resistance level resistance level resistance level broken through a uh, bit of a breakthrough here another strong breakthrough there and then tested it as support there uh same goes for over in the purple and green areas so just quickly resistance resistance price can't break through this level bounces off of it bounces off of it and same here bounces off of this support level and again bounces off of this support level so it says here look in the past to predict the future look left so we've got time along the bottom here. You can see September, August, June, April. Time along the bottom here. Look in the past to predict the future. If we just see, if we were trading this area here. So we were up to these candles here. We couldn't see any of this here. Look in the past. Strong support level here. 
we could keep an eye out at this price, draw this line in, keep an eye out at this price, see if we get a reaction. And we obviously do here. So we'd be keeping an eye out for this price here to come back down and test it and see whether we get a reaction and a reason to get in long or to buy because we know it's bounced off of this level before it's likely to bounce off it again. Sorry about the crazy drawings there. Okay, so next up we've covered support and resistance level. Like I said, very briefly, we can go into this in a lot more detail, but that's going to be a whole separate video in itself. If you want to know more about this, then feel free. There's plenty of uh, YouTube. You don't have to listen to me by all means. Um, but that's just the basic support and resistance there. So now trends. Um, so trend in market, which direction is the market moving in? So this picture here, if I were to give you this, what direction would you say the market is moving in here? The market's moving down. Obviously it's moving down. So we've got the price on the right hand side here. 118, this is a euro dollar. It says up here, euro dollar. 240 minute which is four hours uh, 240 minutes four hour charts so each candlestick represents four hours so obviously you've got price 118 here roughly at about that level up here down to uh, one two two five about here yep okay so we're in a downtrend here hope that makes sense now we've uh, identified that we're in a downtrend that's pretty obvious um, but we need some objective reasons as to why we're in a downtrend so we can start adding in something like this so we've got an initial move down I'm not going to draw on this I'm going to use the latest point initial move down represented by this arrow here to form a lower low, double L, lower low. Yep, uh, so lower low because this was the previous low here. You see the markets come in, previous low. Price has broken that level. Let me get a pen out. Price has broken that level. So price has broken the previous low to form, a low. okay. Prices then moved up to form a lower high. Why is it a lower high? Here was the previous high. It's not broken above that level. It's formed a lower high. Okay, so the price is now stopped at a resistance level to form a lower high than the previous high here. Okay. We've then moved lower still, broken this support level now to form a lower low again, lower than the previous low here, pull back higher to form a lower high, lower than the previous high here, again broken lower low, pull back lower high because it's lower than this high here, yeah this high at about 115, once again another round number, reacting off that round number, nice round number. Uh, here so a series of lower lows lower highs lower lows lower highs lower low lower highs forms a downtrend okay if this was a reverse higher high lower high 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 lower high 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 lower high sorry <laughs> higher high higher low higher high higher low let me draw this out this would be uh, this in reverse, higher high, higher low, break that previous support to form a higher high, higher low, higher high, breaking that support again. So this is our first higher low, this is our second higher low, because we're not breaking through this level, it's higher than the previous low. So this would be in an up, okay, higher high, higher low, and now downtrend, lower low, lower highs. Hope that makes sense. You rewatch that. Sorry about the higher high, 
Clear Low, whatever. Um, so moving on again. In this area here, obviously we've had our lower low, lower low, lower low. Now we've now formed a higher low. Uh, we've still got a lower high, but we've got a higher low. So price is no longer in a downtrend. We call this consolidation. So price is now consolidating. It can't make uh, lower lower lows. So don't, it's not uh, definitive that it's uh, in a downtrend anymore because it can't make a lower low. It's not making a higher high, so we're not in an uptrend. Not a lower low, so we're not in a downtrend. We're in a consolidation phase where price is waiting to break either higher or lower to carry on, either carry on this lower low um, and carry on the downtrend or break higher and start a new uptrend, okay? Delete all of that. Yeah, so here it is, guys. Uh, lower high here, lower high here, higher low here, and potentially another higher low here. So we're forming this kind of uh, triangular pennant shape pattern. I'll come on to that in a second. Uh, where price is consolidating and it's going to get squeezed into this uh, pennant shaped formation so we might see price move lower and bounce off of this level again where it's been tested before here tested before here again going back to the support and resistance levels you can use them there straight the straight are probably more uh, predictable more um, likely to see a reaction as compared to these uh, angular support and resistance levels but anyway, we might see price move lower, bounce off of this support level, higher, lower, and finally they're going to get squeezed to the end. At some point, it's going to break out, and usually a breakout of these sort of consolidation levels uh, is quite a violent breakout, and we tend to continue in the direction of the breakout. So we might break out to the high, or we might break out to the low. I would say in this case, it's more likely that we're going to break out to the low and continue the trend we're already in. This is just a sort of uh, well, consolidation phase. It's like more like a breather in the market. Price is just waiting for it to pop down lower again. Um, but yeah, it could move in any direction. Break out to the high, break out to the low. So you can see we've gone from a very basic chart nothing on it whatsoever we then analyze the price what's happening what direction is the market moving in why do we know that that direction uh, that is the direction of the market we've got objective rules to determine what direction of the market is with the lower lows and lower highs and then we've found that price is now consolidating um, based on previous knowledge I'm not expecting you guys to know this not now but um, when price consolidates uh, usually gets uh, forced into uh, tight levels and then once we break out of these simple patterns um, the direction of the breakout usually continues in that trend so if we were break out to the high we might see a pullback and then continue higher forming our higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows into an uptrend then uh, considering we're already in a downtrend I'd expect it to move the low and move lower here um, but you never know. Um, so yeah, so we've gone from basic chart to having objective rules as to why we think we're in a downtrend and what's actually happening with the price action. That leads us on to our next point. How can we transfer this knowledge uh, to make money in the forex market? So we need to come up with a trading plan. It says here, trading plan is a specific set of rules which has been pr proved to give us an edge over the market. So like that, we had uh, specific objective rules to determine the direction, a trend, or you know, pattern. We haven't covered patterns yet. Well, I suppose we did with that simple pattern, the consolidation pattern, the uh, triangle here. That could be classed as a pattern. So we need objective rules uh, emphasis on the objective so they can't be subject 
where you pick and choose when and how you're going to use them. They need to be objective, so backed by numbers um, to determine the direction and trend. So like we had before, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, break of the previous low, forms a low, a uh, downtrend, sorry. We then need objective uh, rules to enter the market. I'm going to cover this uh, later. So candlestick formation, if you remember back, we had that doji candle. There was others on there, the hammer, shooting stars, um, stuff like that. That might be a reason for entry. Uh, or it could just be a limit order. So when price hits a specific level in the market based on the previous one, so based on either a pattern or trend or direction of the market, uh, when price hits a certain level, we know that at that level, uh, we expect price to either move higher or lower, depending on what uh, the order you've set is. Um, but you have to have a specific objective rule as to why you think it's going to happen at that price, and that's probably going to be determined by a pattern or the trend or direction of the market. So something that you've worked out previously, you're not just setting orders at random levels in the market. Uh, we then need to have uh, trade management rules as well, uh, SL and TP stand for stop loss and take profit and risk management rules as well so position sizing, uh, whether you're going to trade correlating pairs, stuff like that so correlating pairs would be for example uh, the pound dollar and the euro dollar so would you open a trade, if you've already got a trade open on the euro dollar would you open a trade on the pound dollar uh, regardless of the direction so you might have a long on the euro dollar and if you were to open a short on the pound dollar that you could say that covers you in both eventualities so the value of the dollar went up uh, you are likely to win your pound dollar short because you with the same value of the pound you're going to be able to buy it less dollars because the value of the dollar has gone up if that makes sense so your pound dollar short is likely to win, but your euro dollar is likely to lose because the value of the dollar has gone up. So you cover both eventualities. I digress in there a bit, but I hope that makes sense. Uh, we also need account management rules. So the percent of drawdown you are going to allow yourself to go through before you need to stop trading and reassess your uh, trading plan or your techniques, uh, profit taking, number of trades open at one time, whatever it might be. So if you were to backtest a specific strategy on a specific pair, if during that backtesting, uh, whether you go back 20 years, 30 years, whatever it is, during that period of backtesting, if you were to go through a drawdown of 15% in your backtesting, you could simply apply that to your live trading and say, right, following these exact rules, if I go below, if I have a drawdown of 15% or more, so if I had a thousand pounds in my account, if I go, my account value goes below 850 pounds, so a loss of 150, which is 15% of a thousand pounds. If my account value goes below 850 pounds, I need to stop trading and I need to look at what's going wrong because obviously it's not going the same as my back testing. Um, simple as that really. Uh, once you have all these things nailed down, congratulations, you have created a trading plan. So the next few slides are going to go over um, how you could potentially create a trading plan. So for the specific set of rules, we can set up a what, how and when system to run through the process of entering and exiting a trade, which ultimately uh, a bunch of processes to enter and exit a trade creates your trading plan. Okay, so firstly, we need a specific set of rules to look for in order to determine the direction of the market. So, like we've said before, um, this is our what. Okay, so for what, why, how, and when system. So, this is our what. So, what direction is the market moving in? Is it moving up? Is it moving down? Are we looking to get in long or buy? Are we looking to get in short or sell? So in this example, I've used this might be a lower low, lower high, and another lower low, which determines a downtrend. So that's going to look like this. Lower low, 
no high lower low let's just do this for the time being low, low. so as long as this previous low what we're we doing as long as this previous low has been broken we are now in a downtrend now you could say you could come up with a rule that the previous low needs to be broken by at least 10 pips so price would need to move down to here before you consider this a downtrend or whatever it might be but for the purpose of this video I've just said price needs to form a lower low a lower high and that previous low needs to be broken it could be anywhere it could break to here it could break all the way down here but so long as this previous low is broken we are now in a downtrend hope that makes sense so if you have a lower low followed by a low high you must wait for the final lower low before thinking about entering the market so before you're even looking for an entry reason in the market so once the directional trend has been identified using our lower low low high lower low system uh, we need to a specific set of rules which determines our entry into the market so we've got a reason to look for our entry up here and we now need to look for a specific reason to enter and this is our why okay so why are we getting into the trade now this might be a pullback into the previous low support turn resistance so if I draw that on here low lower high again if I'm going too slow for you guys just speed up the video or skip this lower low has been broken so by a pullback into the previous lows support so support because it's a floor support just off of it it's now turned into resistance because we're below it so a pullback into previous lows support turned into resistance would mean price moves a little bit higher moves back into that previous lows price level yeah so price on the side here so we move back into that lows previous price level okay so we've got the lower low lower high lower low so that's our direction sorted we now need to look for an entry price has moved back up into this lower low so that's the start of our entry uh, uh, let me get the laser again. The specific entry reason might be in the form of a bearish engulfing candle. Remember, a bearish candle is open, price moved lower and closed. It's the black candles, so it indicates a sell. Uh, engulfing. Uh, let me draw this again. So let me draw this with yellow. It can be our bullish candle. So price has moved higher, open, close, and red is going to be our bearish candle. So a bearish engulfing candle is going to look something like this. So price has opened here on the bullish candle and closed here, which means it's the open of the next candle. By engulfing, I mean the body of this candle completely engulfs the body of the previous okay I hope that makes sense so bearish because it's uh, price is opened here and closed here so we're bearish the sellers are taking advantage of the market sellers are pushing the price lower engulfing because the body of this bearish candle completely engulfs the body of the previous candle it doesn't have to be bullish but uh, it completely engulfs the body of the previous candle in this instance i've just put it as a bullish candle here okay uh hope that makes sense so form of a bearish engulfing candle the more conservative you are risk averse so the less you like risk the more conservative you want to be um the more entry reasons you'll look for so you might look for a double top with a bearish candle ignore this rsi divergence because we haven't covered that if you're aware of rsi then um 
yeah, you probably know what RSI divergence is, quite a simple tool that most traders use. Um, so let's just go with a uh, double top with bearish candles. So you're no longer just looking for that bearish candle, you're looking for a double top as well. So if you're more conservative or risk averse, you want to add filters to your trading plan um, just to cut out the noise basically. So it says at the bottom there, might reduce the number of trades you enter, but by adding specific filters, you might increase your win percentage. So if you just look for bearish engulfing candles, they're like, like, likely to appear more often than a double top with a bearish engulfing candle. But because they appear more often, they're likely to be less reliable. So you're going to have more trades, but you might lose more than you win. So if you look for the double top with a bearish engulfing candle, um, again, you're adding another filter onto that, another reason to enter. So you're increasing the odds of you being right, so long as you've backtested it and that's what works. And then again, RSI divergence, even if you don't know what it is, it's just another filter you can add on. So you've now got three filters, three things to look for before you enter the trade. Ideally, by adding a filter, you increase the chances of being correct. That doesn't always work, but that's just the way to look at it for this example. Add in a filter, you increase the chances of being correct. So just taking the example of a double top with a bearish candle, that's going to look something like this. So we formed our lower low, lower high, lower low, broken this level, pull back into this level. Now the double top is going to look like this. Double top. So peaked here at the price level that we're looking to pull back into and pull back into that level to form double two tops. Okay. And then at this second top, you're looking for that bearish engulfing candle. Yeah. So engulfs the previous candle. Okay. So lower low, lower high, lower low, pull back into the price range, wait for the double top. On the second top, look for this engulfing candle, engulfing the previous candle's body. Okay, now that's just one of the filters that we might look for. But for this example, I'm just going to stick with the bearish engulfing, ignoring the double top and the RSI divergence, just, just keep it simple. So... Give you a minute to see if you can identify where I'm looking at. So remember to look for the lower low, pull back up, lower high, break that previous lower low, and then a pull back up into where that lower low uh, price range was that we've just broken through. Give you a minute to look for that. Now this was, I literally, as soon as I was uh, coming up with this lecture, I literally just went straight into the charts and found this straight away. So. Um, it's a pretty common theme, um, it's not hard to look for. So even if you wanted to take this into your trading plan and adapt it um, to something that you've actually backtested, I haven't backtested this at all, it's just an example. So you can take this away and adapt it to however you wanted to trade it, however risk averse you are or what have you. Um, so hopefully that's enough time for you to have identified that, don't worry if you haven't. And there we have it, lower low, higher, lower, pull back up to a lower high. So lower high because it's lower than this high here. Lower low, lower high, lower low, and another lower high, pull back into this lower low's price level here. Now it's not exact, it's not exactly in this lower low's uh, level here. But you get the gist. It's pulled back into that similar price level as the previous um, low. There. Okay. So now if we were to zoom in on that level. So pulling back in to the lower lows price level. We're going to zoom in on this circle here. Okay. And remember, the next thing we're looking for is a bearish engulfing candle, which we get there, right at the top. So it says following a rejection. So remember what we said about get the laser pointer. 
remember what we said about uh, the open price so taking this candle here we've got the open price here the close price here so it's a bullish candle so uh, buyers have taken advantage here so opens here closes here but within that time price was all the way up here so within that we're on a 60 minute chart so within that hour price buyers managed to push the price all the way up here but it's then been rejected within that hour it's been rejected immediately okay so the sellers have come in selling pressure has come in and pushed the price back down so not only that is an indication of the sellers coming into play now we've also got this bullish bearish sorry engulfing candle so the sellers have come into play here pushing the price back down from its highs and they've come into here by engulfing the previous bullish candle okay so sellers have come in here and formed this uh, bearish candle here um, engulfing that previous candle okay so we've got kind of two uh, bearish signals here so that was our um, entry reason there. Uh, what, why, how, when? Yep, we've run through that. So we've now got our what, which was the direction, the lower low, low, high, low, low. Our why, pull back into the previous lows um, and look for that bearish engulfing candle. So we now need the how and when, which is the trade management and risk management. So the trend is determined. We've got our entry reason, which is the bearish engulfing candle. Where will the stop loss go? So if the setup is invalidated, if the setup reaches a uh, certain price level, we know that we're wrong. Um, so we'll just cut our losses. So stop loss um, it can be set at a certain dollar amount or a percentage of your account. So you might only risk 1% per trade. So £1,000 in your account, risk 1%, uh, you're going to risk £10. Um, so your stop loss will be set at minus ten pounds. Yeah. So where will the stop loss go? Where will we take profits? Uh, so this is managing a trade, keeping it as simple as possible. Same as that stop loss example I just gave. You get a stop loss at ten pounds. Really want to be putting your stop loss based on invalidation levels, and then working your um, prices out how much you're going to lose on that trade from there. But and keeping this as simple as possible, okay? Like I said, if you've got any questions, uh, drop them to me at the end on my social media or whatever. So for this example, we'll place a stop loss 10 pips above the previous swing high. Now this will make sense in a minute. Don't worry if that doesn't make any sense to you. Uh, the profit target shall be placed at an equal pip move down as the previous bearish move. So if we move on to the next slide here. Now, I said, 10 pips above the previous swing high now swing high okay yes. technically this would be a swing high but like you say here it's a rejection candle so we're going to use a previous swing high as this here so swing high is the highest point um in the previous swing so swing is like a significant price so this here would not be classed as a swing. This move up would not be classed as a swing because it's just a little blip, okay? Uh, whereas this, you probably class this as a swing because it's a significant move higher. So this would be a swing high. This is a definitely a significant move down. So this would be a swing low. Okay, so swing high here. So we've put our, pit, our stop loss 10 pips, which is this measurement here from this line to the red line, which is our stop loss. 10 pip distance from this line higher 10 pips that's where our stop loss is going from 10 pips higher than the previous swing high and the profit target shall be placed at an equal pip move down as the previous bearish move so from this swing high we've moved down to a swing low that move there is 94.6 pips okay so an equal move an equal uh, distance as that which is copy that um, distance 94.6 pips and place it from our entry so the close of the bearish candle from our entry down project that down 94.6 pips same as that one project that down so we would enter the trade here on the close of this bearish candle once we've got our entry reason close of that bearish engulfing candle our take profits are the same as this price move here 
same as this price move here down our stop loss goes here we enter on this trade and as you can see price moved nicely down and hits our profit target 94.6 pips and that's us out of the trade if price were to move higher it would stop us out here for however much we risked on the account maybe we risk one percent um to make i'll show you in the next slide to make however much um so one percent of thousand pounds uh, you risk £10 to make, let's call it uh, £11, something like that, which we've got here. Risk reward ratio of 1.46. So you risk £10 to make £14.60. Yeah. So you've got a £10 risk here to make £14.60 here. And that is pretty much it. So we've now got everything to enter a trade. All we need to know now is the position size. Uh, position size is a tricky one it's going to vary obviously between each individual now this is based on whether you how um, how you cope with risk basically so I would say you don't want to be risking more especially at the beginning of your trading career you don't want to be risking more than 2% maximum I would say even 1% of your account uh, so if you've got like, been using a thousand pounds say you've got ten thousand pounds uh you don't want to be risking more than two hundred pounds two percent of your total account equity on any one trade so on this previous trade here with our stop loss up here and our entry reason here you don't want to be risking more than two hundred pounds up at this level here so you would set your stop loss at minus two hundred pounds to make um Whatever that would be down here, 1800 quid, something like that. So, you don't want to be risking more than 200 pounds or 2% of your account equity. Um, like I said, it's going to vary between each individual. If you don't like losing and that has a negative effect on you, that's going to affect you psycholo uh, psychologically, uh, then you only want to be risking 1% maximum of your account. It's going to take a while for your account to grow, but you're not going to make stupid mistakes because um, you're not going to be affected emotionally by the losers you're going to take. Inevitable, you're going to have losers in trades. Um, so position size dependent on the account size, appetite for risk, and other factors which you might include into your trading plan. So do you have a, a, any other trades open on that day already? So you might have in your plan, you might say you're only allowed to trade. So it says here, my personal risk management techniques, no more than two trades at a time. So I can't open more than two trades at any one time. So say I've got maximum I can risk on a trade is 2%. If I've got two trades open, both risking 2%, that's 4% of my entire account risk at one time. Now, if you didn't have any limit, you could have 10 trades open all at 2%. And that's all good and well, but if they all lose, you've immediately lost 20% of your entire account. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> So that might be part of your trading plan. Uh, only risk a certain percent of your account at any one time. Might be over one trade or five trades. So like I just said there, if you might say you're only allowed to risk 5% of your account at any one time. So you might have one trade on for 1%, one trade on for 2%, and then however many other trades on for 0.5%, all to add up to 5%. So it's up to you. Um, basically, I, I know you probably getting a bit frustrated that you want a definite answer there but um, it does really depend on the individual I can't give you a definite answer there. so my personal risk management technique I rec I from what I've back tested I rank my trades um, based on their success profitability drawdown um, recovery factor so if I go into drawdown how quickly does it take me out of that drawdown um, win percentage, risk reward ratio, I rank them all based on all of these factors individually. I rank them all from A star to C. So I'll have, say, uh, I don't know off the top of my head how many, maybe 5 to 10 A star trades, which I risk 2% of my account on. I then have a certain amount of A trades, which I risk 1.5% of the account on. I then have X amount of uh, B trades, which I risk 1% of the account on, and then the rest are C trades, which I risk 0.5% of the account on. 
So my best trades, my best performing trades, I'm risking the most amount of uh, account equity on. So 2%. My best performing trades, A star, so I risk 2% on. It's basically all mass. You, you put in the odds in your favor. So when the odds are in your favor, you risk more money, more whatever you want to class it as. But yeah, ultimately more money. So you risk more money when the odds are in your favor. Um, yeah, that's that's my personal technique of doing it. You can I wouldn't recommend copying that, but make sure you um, uh, test it at least. So you can use that as a example and adapt it to whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, but yeah, ultimately now the trade can be open. We've had our what, we've had our why, we've had our how, um, we've got the risk management as well there. Uh, yeah, so ultimately the trade can be open. So that pretty much sums up the entire lecture. So summary here, we've got uh, trading platforms, trading view, and MetaTrader. Those are the two I use. MetaTrader, I take my trades through. I've linked my broker to my MetaTrader account. I've also linked um, it to my FX book account. So, and I'm verified on there as well. So that basically records all of my trades I'm making. So uh, it gives you a breakdown of, let's say, your drawdown. I also keep my own spreadsheets on Excel for that as well, but I do link that to my FX. But so it keeps a record of your drawdown, um, whether you're up, whether you're down equity wise, what percentage you're down, how many trades you've taken, uh, details of the trades you've taken. And so on and so forth um, and getting verified on that um, proves that I'm trading a live account so if I get to the point where I'm going to show you guys I've put it on my Instagram um, that is it proves that I'm not faking what I'm doing if that makes sense um, and also the stuff I'm posting on TradingView so like I said you can't delete any of your charts that you post on TradingView considering I'm posting all the charts and then making weekly analysis videos of all of the charts I've posted and telling you at the time what I'm risking, how I'm doing it, and then recapping whether it won or whether it lost. I can't bullshit you guys. I'm. This is what I'm doing. There's no bullshit in it. If I'm in a drawdown, I'm telling you I'm in a drawdown. If I'm making money, I'm telling you I'm making money. Um, but yeah, that's the benefit of linking that to But just another sort of uh, proof that this is uh, for real. Uh, so we've run through those trading platforms. There are others out there. Most brokers also uh, provide their own trading platforms. I've found I've used uh, maybe four or five different brokers since I've started trading for the first time. I found most brokers' actual trading platforms are pretty crappy. Um, so I don't actually use them for any chart analysis or anything like that. But you can do if that's what you want to do. Uh, it's easy, all in one place then. Um, so that's the trading platforms candlesticks. We ran through that as well. Just remember, represent price action throughout a given period of time. So we ran through them as well. Um, support and resistance levels. Briefly ran through that. Say, those of you who've got trading experience before, probably, you know, wondering why I left this out. Why didn't I cover that? That's important. This is important. It was just a brief rundown of the support and resistance levels. Same with the trend as well. Just a brief rundown of the trend. Uh, I didn't get as objective as I would like to um, identify trends. It was just purely for the example we use in this uh, video. But yeah, you can um, set rules. Hopefully this has given you a sort of uh, baseline. You can adapt and set your own rules to what you might class as a trend. And then obviously we've covered what makes up a trading plan as well. Um, so hopefully that's everything you need. Obviously, adapt it as you see fit. You could start with something similar to what I've run through in this video and adapt it and backtest it and make sure it works. Um, but once you've found something that does work, once you've backtested it, that's the important thing, and found it that uh, does work, uh, basically stick to the rules, make the plan as objective as possible, and, well, you can't go guys so long as you stick to the rules that's the these two go hand in hand make it as objective as possible so numbers based make it make a specific set of rules that you have to follow step by step 
before you can enter a trade and the same for the entry reason you have to have an exact entry reason you can't just say if it breaks this price i'm going to enter short at that at that exact price you need an exact you need an exact specific set of rules to enter the trade on it needs to be a as objective as possible otherwise your emotions are going to get involved you're going to start getting subjective about um, entry reasons you're going to think you're going to start thinking oh I've missed out on the trade and you FOMO into a trade you see price moving lower and you want to get in on it you're going to enter short and then price will immediately go higher and you'll lose your money and you'll get angry and you'll try getting on on high then because you missed out so you want to get in on the next one to make up your recoup your losses and it just gets messy so you want to keep it as objective as possible if you lose you lose if you win you win you just neutral keep it as objective as possible stick to the rules don't deviate from your rules as i just said then uh like i said the examples are not my way of trading and found at random to be used as an example for educational purposes only so and i did say during that video i literally just went on went on the chart that was up on my screen at the time saw what i thought was a downtrend on the daily zoomed in on the hourly whatever found found that downtrend just gave that as an example okay and then adapted a trading style to work for that specific time and that specific trade so that's not to say that this is going to work every single time so if you are looking at copying this trade or whatever you need to make sure that you go back and back test it make sure it actually works because i have no idea if this actually in the long term so go back back test it make sure it works uh, adapt it however you want um yeah so it should not be traded without back testing yourself and that concludes the uh first educational video i hope you have found this um useful thank you very much for watching i'm going to leave my details here contact me as say if you've got any questions on this contact me on twitter uh, instagram youtube my website here and also my email address if you want to contact me by email um, get in touch with me even if you haven't got any questions about this any questions in general about trading or life in general whatever you just want to say hi um, yeah get in touch with me thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed it cheers